Hey folks, Will Brink here at www.brinkzone.com. Just having my morning coffee and going to continue our creatine discussion series. Uh, I wanted to cover today uh, side effects and benefits. Uh, on side effects, uh, there are none. Have a nice day. Ser but seriously. Um, to be honest with you, uh, you know, you hear these side effects, it's sort of float around the internet about uh, kidney, liver, or something, something, and uh, to be honest with you, there is just no studies to support any of it. Uh, and you know, some of the people who should know better in the medical profession otherwise uh, still perpetuate some of this stuff, and I'll tell you, I don't really know what the purpose is, but um, hey, if you're a doctor, researcher, what have you, and you've got some data showing that uh, there are uh, any dangers uh, to creatine use in healthy people, by all means send it to me because I've been uh, part of primary research in creatine, I've done consulting work for creatine companies, uh, so on and so on and so on, and man, I just can't find it. So, now, and two, we obviously have to look at another issue, which again, most people, certainly in the uh, medical field, uh, gotta get some coffee here. Stuff strains my brain, you know, I gotta have my coffee. But, um, if you're in the medical field, scientific field, etc., etc., you understand and accept the concept of risk to benefit. Uh, a lot of people in the uh, general public don't really understand risk to benefit, but simply put, basically, you have to always balance no matter what you're doing, eating, walking, taking supplements, drugs, it doesn't matter. You still have to make a risk to benefit assessment. That is, what is the risk related to the benefit? If the risk obviously is minimal or acceptable, and the benefits are high, then you know you do whatever it is you're going to do. Um, and again, this is a bit of a, it can be actually be a very complicated topic in a, in a research setting. But for a general topic here, you get the gist. So the risks of creatine in healthy people are phenomenally low, if non-existent. But let's we can't say it's zero because nothing is zero. You could drink a glass of water and you know die uh, from uh, an, something strange. So let's just go with that. But what you don't see a lot of which always baffles me in the, uh, even in the fitness areas, uh, but much less medical areas and others, are the benefits of creatine, of which most people are unaware. There are, is a large, large number of studies showing all manner of possible health benefits to creatine. Uh, and interestingly, I mean, I, I often will say to people, I think the health benefits or the potential health benefits of creatine are actually more compelling than its performance benefits. And I've written many, many articles on that. Uh, and again, you can go to my website at brinkzone.com and download a free report that covers a lot of these health benefits. But to uh, quickly, just uh, uh, briefly go over them, uh, creatine has been shown to help in a, in a wide range of muscular, neuromuscular diseases such as MS, uh, and which makes perfect sense if you think about it. Uh, there's a uh, doctor, uh, I believe it's pronounced Tarnopolosky, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, uh, who has been using uh, creatine with uh, uh, kids with MS for years uh, at pretty high doses and we're going on uh, it's got to be 10 years now uh, with some pretty impressive effects but there's a lot in the literature on uh, neuromuscular diseases also various diseases of the brain um, it, there's a couple studies that show it lower cholesterol but I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that one uh, wasting diseases creatine looks effective uh, moderately effective for various wasting diseases uh, it improves brain metabolism in general. So, and that's just a few, I'm just covering a couple of small, uh, quick issues of the possible benefits of creatine. So, uh, again, the side effects, honestly, are, are I'm going to say minimal just to be fair, uh, but I honestly want to say non-existent, but I'm going to say minimal to be fair. And the possible benefits clearly outweigh the minimal risks, and I really wish more uh, medical professionals, scientists, stuff would look into this. I wish, the, of course, the media would spend a little more time looking into that. And again, we are talking about creatine monohydrate here. No other form of creatine at this time. So make sure that stick that in your brain uh, until we ever get to other forms of creatine. So that's my quick lecture of the day, talking about uh, risk of creatine versus benefits of creatine. So whatever you hear wandering around the, the net, uh, I, you know, I heard. So and so took creatine and his liver fell out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I promise you, are uh, absolutely not supported by the hundreds of studies. I think we're at a couple hundred studies now, and some are long-term. Again, you hear someone say, "Well, there's no long-term studies." Again, that is, uh, I'm going to say politely, BS. 
Uh, and again, you now have millions and millions of users. And as always, you have to outweigh the risks, the possible risks, to the possible benefits. And the risk to benefit with creatine monohydrate is clearly in favor of the benefit. And that's it for today. And I'll see you guys on the Brink Zone. Now, for more information on creatine and other topics, head on over to www.brinkzone.com where you'll find my blog, more videos, free reports on fat loss, muscle building, supplements, fitness, health, and longevity, as well as a ton of articles in my free weekly newsletter. So stop on by, and I'll see you at www.brinkzone.com.